Die for what you did. Hey, Mom, it's Abby. Oh, this is my new number, so you can put it in under my name or ask Jackson to do it if you don't know how. Uh, so I just closed the deal. Vin, the landlord guy, called me the other day and told me I'm free to come in whenever I want. The movers dropped off the furniture yesterday, so... I was just gonna go out and see the place, but it's a couple of hours away, so... So I decided to stay. Um, I'm going to stay there over Christmas and get used to the place, but... I'll see you soon, okay? I love you. Okay, bye. Hey, Kylie, it's Abby. Hey, dude. What's up? Are you free tomorrow? Uh, I think at like 10. Why? Um, I think I have something you might be interested in. It's dated September 1941. Where'd you find it at? In this old trunk. I guess the last guy left it behind when they evicted him. Whoa. What? Um, this is, uh, what's his name? Wait, you recognize him? I think so. Oh, do you know what happened to him? I don't really remember. There was this huge scandal after he killed the girls and his dad worked with the mayor or something. He's buried at Trinity. Do you know where that is? Um, I think so, yeah. I passed it on my way up here. You did? On your way from Maryland? Apple Maps, dude. Okay, I'm gonna go because I've got to meet Tom at Panera. No! Oh. Kylie. Yeah, bite me. Oh, and you should stop by Trinity and see if you can find out anything on him. Go to an old cemetery armed with a last name and hope for the best. And you know he's a dude. Two pieces of information are better than one. You're a turd. Well, text me if you find out anything. All right, bye Kylie.
Come in. Can I help you? Yes. Actually, I'm looking for someone. Well, miss, I'd find better hang out than this if you're looking for a boyfriend. <laughs> no, not a boyfriend. Um, this man. His name was... Joel. Where the hell did you find that? Uh, it was in my new house, in an old black truck. In your house? What are you looking for him for? I want to know who he was. A miss. He was a killer, that's who he was. You know where I could find more on him? I would guess on the Google. I don't have internet right now, but do you know anywhere else? Well, after he died, they moved all his stuff to the City Hall records. We might try City Hall. City Hall? Yeah, it's down on um, West Front Street, right next to the uh, Bittersweet Kitchen restaurant. Oh, okay, great. Well, and Miss, thank you. do me a favor. Don't come back here again. I don't want to get involved in whatever it is you're doing. Scared, that's all. It was a mistake going to West Point in the first place. I'm no fighter. It's been about a month since I came home. My parents turned me away at the door. I can't say I'm surprised. I can't say I would have reacted any differently in their shoes. Pastor Miller says I shouldn't focus on the past. When I first came here after some adjustment, I told him I wanted to be a writer. He said I should start with my own story, which I have to admit has become a lot more interesting in the past few weeks. On December 7th, we got the news. The Japs had attacked Pearl Harbor. A date which will live in infamy. It took me a few days to get back to media, longer due to the cold, but apparently news travels faster than I do. When I turned up, my dad told me to leave. He didn't watch me go, he went inside, but my mom watched me go. If she was sad to see me go, I couldn't see it. I walked out north of town for a bit and found Trinity, or rather, Pastor Miller drove by me shuffling through the storm. He took me in and told me that I could stay here, provided I worked the land, like Adam, after he was cast out from Eden, to use his words. So far, it's been a lot of physical work, nothing too bad. But Miller warns me that this summer is going to be especially busy.
I've dug about 35 graves since February. Not everyone was from the front, but there were enough. Veronica and her dad showed up four days ago for a burial. I never asked if her brother had enlisted. I guess I found my answer. I think I understand now what Miller meant by busy. Miller told me the Air Boys start their German bombing runs today. It certainly explains the noise. Pastor Miller gave me the day off, so I came up to this spot in the forest I rather like. It's maybe a mile from Trinity, but secluded and peaceful. From it, I can see the town, the old Connolly house, their newer mansion, you name it. I always liked the old house more. Even though they haven't touched the place in years, the building itself was beautiful. When I was a kid, I'd always see the lights on at night and thought it would make a great place for a ghost story or some pulp nonsense my mother disdained so much. Miller bought me another book, and I started writing some stories there. He's nice. Plus the whiskey he keeps in his office for strictly medicinal purposes is great. I feel alone. I am alone. It's strange to be this isolated for this long. It's not healthy. I can't sleep anymore. I don't eat. I don't know if it's wrong to complain about. When I left West Point, I think I knew this was coming. I keep hearing bits and pieces of news from the churchgoers, rarely any good. I try to tune it out. It doesn't work. I'm worried. I think that's the word. I think I'll never be able to go back to normal, so to speak. I'll never be able to rejoin the world in a civilized sense. I feel like that at least. Whether that's true or not, well, I've got to wait to find out. But in the meantime, I'm my own worst enemy. I haven't seen Miller in three days. First it was just because of Christmas, now the snow. His newspaper came in though. 
I usually stay away from the rags, but the headline caught my eye. Murders in media. It's descriptive, at least. To quote directly, two girls found, Tiana Jimenez and Tilly Elmcroft. According to the paper, Tiana was found the other day, a stone's throw away from my spot in the mountains. The other girl, Tilly, was found about a month ago in a forest near Chester by two men hunting deer, half rotted. It's scary stuff, things like this. It's partly why I stay away from the news. There's never anything good worth reporting, always some murder or news about the war. I think that's why stories exist. Even in scary stories or tragedies, at least a bad guy loses. Dracula dies, the Wicked Witch dies. Come to think of it, most good stories end with the death of the antagonist. It speaks about the nature of man, I think. Kill what you fear, attack the foreign, then canonize it after the fact when you're level-headed enough to see the mistakes you made. I hope we grow out of that. I'd like to think Hitler and his boys are the last we'll see of such blind hate. I'm probably wrong. The past few nights, when I'm heading over back to Trinity, I've noticed a light on at the old Connolly house. Not every night, but I didn't even know they still had gas going in the old place. I remember hearing stories of when they built the house. The Connollys prefer not to talk about it, but gossip once was that Mayor Connolly's grandfather died in an asylum after trying to kill the mayor and his brother. I don't know if any of it's true, but it does make you curious. I've wanted to visit for a while now. I might head down. I've got nothing else to do, and Miller's cut off my whiskey. You know what's weird? 
no, 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 no. The man at the graveyard said he knew when Joel died, just offhand. And you know what he said to me before I left? He said not to involve him. Okay. Well, why did he have such a problem with Joel? Uh, he was a murderer. Then why did he specify not to involve him? Maybe you're related to one of the victims? You don't just get over that. What? Do you know I don't like when you get those goblin lines? What's, what's up? Kylie. What if he was related to Joel? What's your name? Excuse me. Your name? Mine's Abigail. Mine's uh, Andrew. Call me Andy. Good to meet you. When are you here this time in the morning? Oh, uh, I found it. It's Joel's. Take it, it's important. No, no. Trust me, if you don't like it, I'll never come back here. Come in. Thank you. I want to go public with it. The world needs to know that Joel's innocent. That it was this man Connolly, not Joel. Why? Why? Because... Because it's the truth. Because he didn't do anything wrong. Who's gonna care? I'm the only one left. The only one left? My name is Andrew Catmull. Joel. Joel is my older brother. I was born in 39, so I don't remember much about him. But he was the devil who stalked these women from the forest around here. This, uh, what you found out is a damn lot to take in. But I'm glad you found it. I think it's a little bit easier knowing the truth. But why not tell the world? Let them know that it was Connolly. Abigail, the Connolly that Joel refers to was Richard Connolly. His great-grandson is the mayor of this town now. Do you know what happened if you brought this to light? Nothing. Nothing for me or my family. It's just me. Please don't let that is a bad thing. Just me is good enough. Yeah, but... Listen, what you've done is wonderful. You've taken a chip off an old man's shoulder. It's been there for a long, long time. And that is the most good that could come from this. You have my thanks. And you have Joel's. Now, I need to get to work. I have a lot to do today. Thank you, Abigail. Hey, Kylie, it's Abby. Uh, listen, I'm not gonna be able to make it tonight. I decided to go back to my parents for a while, see them for Christmas, you know. Yeah, I just, I feel like I should be back home or something to you yeah, haven't seen him in a while and stuff, which, you know, because I, you know, I, I don't know, that, that whole thing, it, 
It was a lot. But I'll call you or text you when I get back to Bridgewater what I'm thinking. For now, I think I just need to get my head back on straight. Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.